So this is a secondhand dress that I got from swapping recently. And some places actually charge a membership fee for swapping and it can go up to about $600. Just for swapping clothes, I think that's a little bit crazy. So my question is, how is this making sustainable fashion more accessible to people? Does it make sense for me to swap clothes? How am I making a difference by swapping clothes? Oh, and by the way, if you didn't know already, the fashion industry is one of the most polluting industries in the world. Is it even possible for fashion, a gigantic capitalist industry that encourages constant consumption to ever be sustainable? So let's do this. So clothes swapping, it's about bringing back the agency in fashion to the hands of consumers. In the past 20 decades, um, fashion industry has been telling us how to look good, um, what to wear and what style can bring us happiness and stuff like that. But what clothes swapping is, it puts back the agency to everyone to help them define what fashion is for them. And it spills over to what you'd want to see in the fashion industry in the future. This is Ray Padin. He is the founder of local clothes swapping boutique, The Fashion Pulpit. We're going to be talking about our racks and hanger. And Connected Threads Asia. So what am I doing by, you know, choosing clothes swapping as a way to like sell clothes, etc.? If you are prolonging the lifespan of your clothes, you're actually saving 20% of your carbon emission, the water use, energy. So that's in general. But for the numbers perspective, swapping needs more data analysis. Coming from my point of view, I'm just wondering like why I would pay like this membership price, uh, especially if you know that money I can use to just buy something off a rack that I really want. So I think in terms of price point, it would be difficult for clothes swapping concept to win versus fast fashion. But we need to understand that sustainability has different layers and what clothes swapping is providing you is taking back your dead stock and create a valuable asset for you instead of just disposing them. We are also trying our best to explore different alternatives to be more accessible and inclusive like for example we just recently um, launched our student membership oh, so at okay. least everyone can enjoy swapping because i think there's no point of having a sustainable initiative where it's not really accessible to everyone okay so if we all just swap clothes or buy thrifted clothing prolonging the lifespan and so on problem solved right i wish it should be the solution mm -hmm. but i think the underlying problem here or the elephant in the room is consumption. It's a double-edged sword because if we say like the solution is stop consuming, a lot of people will suffer because they will lose their job. And then if we continue consumption because it's going to fuel everyone's lifestyle, um, it's also not sustainable for the planet. Most of the time we're sold out in the idea that we need to buy our way into sustainability. So organic cotton, um, recycled polyester, or even thrifting, and then we're sustainable. But sometimes being sustainable also is looking in what we have in our wardrobe. Because right now, if we just say, the new thing is sustainability and you need to be sustainable. And if we really don't understand that word, it becomes a trend. And just like any other trend, it will go away. And then we will go back to the old behavior of consumption. So clothes swapping, thrifting, or buying secondhand is not the silver bullet. These are just all parts of the solution while we are transitioning to a more sustainable world. So even as we are moving into a more sustainable model, I think it's still based off consumption. So how do we balance that? When the fashion pulpit started, it was purely because we wanted to save as many clothes as we want. The whole idea was to be sustainable. And for us to be sustainable was to swap your clothes. But I think what is important is for us to be reminded that 
the reason why we're doing this is because we wanted to solve the whole issues of consumption and the whole the capitalistic system. We always thought that the next step of after owning this piece and we no longer want them is disposing them. Now people are discovering that there's actually more ways for you to end the life of your clothes and knowing that there's going to be someone who's going to continue a story, the story of your clothes, is quite reassuring that the investment that we put in is worth it. So can my habit of clothes swapping or thrifting solve the fundamental problem of consumption? I really doubt that. And as the saying goes, it's easier to imagine the end of the world than the end to capitalism. But could it maybe, just maybe, lead to a better future under the current system? I think so. At the very least, if more people do it, it reduces the pressure on big companies to produce more while we find a better solution to our fashion problems. I think that in the current system, we believe that happiness is achieved by having more things in our lives. However, perhaps we should re-examine that notion.